Between time and space, it's a deluge of activities. Uh, you know, the large of activities that have been created, being executed and performed, uh, sometimes maintained and sustained by human beings, all in the crave in order to meet responsibilities, and that is what the human being is all about. But the fact still remains, it's not about meeting responsibilities now, it's about filling that space between life and death. You're welcome to Reflection. My name is Yusuf Nadab Usman, and then every week on this program, we scan through the Nigerian society to fish out the notables among them, among us that is, and then um, the elder statesmen among us, and of course those who have seen yesterday, and are still seeing today, and made some great extent really, uh, project a little bit about the future given their experience this week. It's my pleasure to host on this program an instructor, an administrator, a soldier, and some call him a soldier's soldier. He is not any other person but the 81 year old Major General Paul Chabi Tarfa. Welcome to Reflection, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> let's just hit the nail on the head. You had a very good, nice upbringing um, from childhood where you're born in Garikida. And you came through and become a major general, a major general of repute, a major general of note. And of course, the Nigerian history cannot be written without the mention of your name. But people want to know, at the early stage, you went to secondary school, you went to primary school, secondary school, and the military career. Some other things featured in your life that maybe saw the future for you. For instance, you had some few names that were just with you in childhood. Mm -hmm. One of them is Salumpa, which literally means man of war. And then your colleagues call you Britain. Some of them call you Gandhi, all right? And of course, Chabri is there with you. But all of this, when you look at them, point towards the fact that something is going to happen to you greatly, talking about war, talking about courage, and the rest of them. Tell us about these names, first and foremost, and how they reflected on your life. First of all, I, you know, from the age of eight, mm. you know, I started education. In those days, they called it CRI, mm -hmm. Christian Religious Instruction. It's like, what do you call today? Kindergarten. Okay. By 1954, mm -hmm. I started um, senior primary school. Then, 55, 56, I went to secondary school in Yola. What was the name of the school? Adamawa Provincial Secondary School. Oh, right. Those days, of course, we had and That's the present day General College. I yes, if so. you call it like that. Yes, that's yes. the name now. Yes, mm. yes, yes. In those days, there were only 12 of such secondary schools. In apart the whole from, of the North. In the whole of the North. We had a very good school where most of them were English. And you know how strict they were administratively. But you asked earlier on about uh, <clears throat> my names. The names, yeah. I was the last of my father's 11 sons. The last. The last right. of my father's 11 sons. And so I was petted by the senior. Now, we were as school as children in those days, as shepherds. Mm -hmm. uh, even from school after school, we we'll get back, look after our sheep or goats, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So right from that time, I was seen as a leader among my peers. Okay. Regardless so, of age. 
regardless of age. Right. Regardless, to my surprise, mm. regardless of age. Mm -hmm. To my surprise. And because I knew there were some that seniored you then among Indeed. them. Indeed. Yeah. So some of them used to call me uh, Sal Salmpa. We call it Salmpa means man of war. They saw me as somebody who is aggressive or somebody who can settle or somebody who can lead Sanpa. But were you really aggressive as a child? I was not, but uh, somehow I had influence. Okay. Even there were two heavy ch gentlemen. One mm -hmm. of them was called Kolo mm -hmm. and one was uh, called Ashana. They belonged to two camps and they were always fighting. But each time I appeared, mm -hmm. They would listen to me, and it was over. Now, my senior brothers, on the other hand, the most, some of them were teachers, even one was a pastor. And this, one of them used to call me Gandhi. Okay. I had no idea what that Gandhi was <laughs> at all. Then, but he called me Gandhi. Yes. I was a small boy. Yeah. But because he probably read about Gandhi and what Gandhi was, and because he probably knew or was told that the man called Gandhi was small, because I was small, mm -hmm. so he used to call me Gandhi, Gandhi, Gandhi throughout. You see? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is, you know, we, were, we used to do, uh, make cars, using stalks and so on, so on, so right. like an engineer. Corn stalk. Yeah. Yeah. So my own was always better. Okay. And they called me British, 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 British. So they, they used to call me also British and okay. so on. Okay. And so the names went on like that. And then when I went to secondary school, being a Christian, I had this. And after baptism, That's called Paul, okay. and uh, a good friend of mine called Peter. He said, okay, I am Peter, he must be Paul. And we read Paul also that Paul was not particularly a big man. He was not a very big man, but by stature he was small sort of thing. So all these pointed out mm. that it was focusing on me as somebody like that. Okay. There we were, we continued in secondary school. In secondary school, I was so favored. Not that I was the brightest, mm. of course not. Okay. I was just an average student. Mm. I just was never, I was never in the first five, mm. but uh, never in the last five. Okay, just so, in between. <laughs> just me. Yeah. <laughs> but the principal had so much respect for me especially the vice principal called Mr. Stride, George Stride. I don't know how they developed interest in me. And the principal would always say, Paul, help them. The principal was called Mr. West. Okay. Paul, help them. And they would always discuss something. But if there is something to settle, I would be called upon to do. That wise, I was appointed house captain okay. in one of the schools. In which, in, grade, the in which grade was that? Yeah. You know, in this, during our time, there were only two, uh, from one, from two. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, at, yeah, from three. Okay. From three. Right. From three, I was appointed uh, house captain continued there and so on and so on until we got on to uh, the fifth form. Then Sir Amadou Bello came to the school. Mm -hmm. You know, he was going around all the states, I mean the, the, the provinces, to tell us that, look, Nigeria is Nigeria. Um, the time has come for you, young men, to play your part 
in the future leadership of the country. One of which is to join the military. So when Salvador came to the school, he said, uh, you know, we were gathered in the hall and uh, he, he spoke and just threw his slippers back, back forward and he said, who can step into my shoes among you? Okay. So we were small boys or so, ah, how can we? Yeah. Then he said, yes, I want each and every one of you to be able in the future to step into my shoes for leadership in this country. So one gentleman, a young man called Siddiqui, mm -hmm. you know, during question time, he put up his hand. Yes, yes. He said, what is your work, sir? <laughs> He's a young boy, you know. He said, what is your work, sir? What do you do? And people say, oh, look at this guy. Mm -hmm. They say, no, 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 no. This is Samad said, no, very good, good question. Mm -hmm. Very good question. He said, when the school closes, I want you to send him to Kaduna to stay with me. Okay. And I will show him what I do. Okay. He will learn. Okay. Ah, that was surprised. What? 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 And in fact, when at the end of you know the school you know when one on break, Siddiqui was sent to Kaduna to stay with our Bello, the premier, mm -hmm. to see what he was doing. The premier was doing. Yes. And it was a wonderful thing. So that was followed by now closing. We were going to pass out on six then. Some are going to this, some are going to that. And then the call to join the army came. Before we talk about the army, I want us to exhaust that uh, secondary school or middle school days. Yeah. At a point in time at uh, your middle school or the present day Jaramutlam Amit College, where you schooled then in the 50s, you normally pay homage on the line of Adamawa yeah. every Saturday. Yeah. And you trek some distance of about six to seven kilometers on where yeah. I'm mean, trek to yeah. Yeah. pay homage yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. After that, you disperse to town and then really come back later in the night. But at the point in time, you as students and as young as you were then revolted and said you wouldn't do that. Yeah. What really happened? Why did you revolt? And how, would, how did it end up then? Good question. Yeah. You know, our school, even as it is today, is roughly five kilometers mm -hmm. to Yola. There is, you know, That's from Jumeta to Yola. Yeah, from Jumeta to Yola. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it could be very hot. And most of us were barefoot. So we would walk every Saturday every Saturday of the week, mm. led by our house captains mm -hmm. and the house masters mm -hmm. to go and pay homage to His Royal Highness, who was a father to us. There was nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Because he loved that and he was so nice to us. He delights at seeing us. But unfortunately, sometimes it was so hard for us walking. Mm. You know, it could be so, if you are not well, okay, you could be excused. But even at the best of time, walking five kilometers, mm. you know, it wasn't so easy all the time. So, our house captain, the head boy and the house captains decided the Kai, it is enough. Uh, uh, this going to Yola mm. every Saturday is too much. Mm. Uh, we will not go until they tell us to. 
to change the program. <laughs> so one evening, the head boy and the house captains gathered us in the school square and we were all there. So he said, well, everybody is here. We won't tell you that uh, we have decided that come next Saturday, we will not walk to Yola to go and pay homage. It's too hot. It's time that they consider this. Ah, we did this without the hearing of the teachers. The principal had no idea. None of them were aware, but it was within us from the head boy to the last boy in the school. So we all clapped, yeah, 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 good, good. <laughs> You're all waiting for that opportunity. So we were waiting for that opportunity. Yeah. So that Saturday came. So we all got into our white captains. Instead of? Yeah, we were all in our captain. Okay. We said, they said, all right, on Saturday morning, before six o'clock, let everybody leave the school. Go to Jamaica or go wherever you can. What but time do you normally pay the, pay, the, pay, the, I mean, pay the homage? At what time do you go? When we leave, mm. around maybe seven, eight. Okay. By 10 o'clock, mm. we would have walked to that, that distance. Mm -hmm. And then we would wait okay. until we are called in mm. into the palace right. to say, long live your uh, life. We mm -hmm. in flat and cheese. Yes. May you live long. Mm -hmm. May you live long. That kind. And then he would say, thank you very much. Well done. Well done, schoolboy. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That was all. From then, we will be on our own again. Okay. To start trekking from Yola to Jamaica or to the school okay. or wherever. Well, that was a free day on that day. Anyway. That, yeah, until 6 o'clock. Right. Everybody would be around, okay. go to the dining hall and eat. But that Saturday, mm. working on the instruction or orders of the house of the of the of the head boy and house captains, everybody got into our captains. We had that dress, school dress, white captains with red caps, who just disappeared. Boom! We didn't have breakfast mm -hmm. that morning. Because everybody wants to. Can you imagine that? So people were just seeing us in town, in Jamaica. Ah, today is Saturday. They are supposed to be in Yola. Yes. And everybody was there. Some people, I know, it was getting afternoon. We had no money in our pockets at that time and nothing to eat. And so, so we were just walking like hungry looking things, <laughs> you know? We have disobeyed going to Yola, mm -hmm. and here we are suffering in Jamaica, <laughs> and so Then, accordingly, we got back to the school, hoping that food would be ready in the dining hall, as usual. Mm -hmm. On discovering that uh, we have revolted, the principal ordered the kitchen to be shut, closed. No food, no dinner no that day. Ah. So, <laughs> when we returned to school, we were all anxious to get back to that and what to eat. We discovered there was not even no light even. It was dark, pitch dark, and the doors were closed. Yeah. The cooks were not there. Why? They say, that's the free punishment. And that led to the dismissal of the head boy uh -huh. and the three, uh, I mean, the four house captains. Okay. Okay. They all were dismissed. And those who are uh, so big and so on receive some lashes. Okay. One, two, one, two, one, two. And were made. To know that disobedience was not the order, it was not the way 
to settle problems. Okay. We did not discuss with the school authorities. It was just arbitrary like that, that we would not go to Yora. And so, if we had said, maybe they would have shifted. But however, to cut the story short, mm. that led to their saying, all right, it is true, we have to reconsider this. Okay. The school so, authority. Yeah, the school right. authority. So they said, okay, first Saturday of the term, and then the last. Okay. Instead of every Saturday. Instead of every Saturday. Saturday. All right. So that was well done. I'm still in that school, um, you, as a person, was among the three yeah. that was selected, as we come to understand, to represent your school and indeed your province at the independence, you know, celebration in Lagos in 1960, October 1. Yeah. Why you? Um, maybe I should make this point. Right. We had uh, one Mr. Cox, mm -hmm. who was the housemaster. There was a time he did not do something accordingly and was asking us because he didn't want to take the blame. You know, must have said something wrongly to the principal that the boys did not do this, the boys didn't do that. You know, every Saturday we used to have um, a kind of inspection by the school authorities. And we will do everything to keep the school clean from our rooms, our beds, toilets, surroundings, and so on. I think once at one stage, Mr. Cox didn't tell us what was expected of us to do. Mm -hmm. So we were accused of that. And he was saying we should, ap we should ap apologize okay. to the president. I said, no, we will not. At that time, I'd become Prefect. Okay. I was a prefect. I said, no, we would not because you didn't do you We would do that if we had known. Mm -hmm. But just like that, what, 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 what shall we do to, to tell the principal? So he wasn't happy with me, but eventually it got to the knowledge of the principal that Mr. Cox was wrong. Absolutely. Okay. He did not pass the information to us as to what to do in working our house. That's what well. They continued to study me. So when it came to, to choose out who will go to Lagos, ah, I went. Eventually, the top on the list was me. That was it, and it happened. It followed until when the choice to go to NMTC. Okay. okay. You're not talking about the military school. Yeah. We didn't exhaust the independence okay, train okay. and your journey yeah, to yeah. Lagos. Uh, you had never been to Lagos, I believe, at oh, the time. Yes, uh, that it was your all. first experience, yeah. and overnight you find yourself in Lagos, and indeed among the multitude of crowd of people there who were there marking or celebrating. That was when Nigeria became Nigeria Absolutely. as an independent country. Yeah. And you were there live. Yeah. You witnessed it. Yeah. I was there live. Yes. At the Oh, the experience. Beautiful. In fact, when we were. Nominated, we gathered uh, or assembled in Kaduna, and uh, the late Isa Kaita, who was the Minister of uh, Education then, a fantastic man, they prepared us and so on. And we traveled in big, should I say, lorries, or okay. trucks, mm -hmm. buses, through yeah. Bida mm -hmm. to Lagos. And uh, I had this gentleman called Idris Mohamed, who became my friend. But we, we became friends during what we used to call Erling Smith sports competition, when the provinces in the Northeast used to compete. So he is from Bauchi, so became, we became friends. And uh, we went to Lagos. We went to Lagos, the two of us meant belong to each other. Then we decided to be adventurous. Okay. To one day, one time. The night before, before the independence. The independence. Right. We 
found ourselves in one of the ship's adventure. Mm -hmm. You know, that they allowed us. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether it was a big ship or one of these things, but somehow the gentleman, they allowed us. So we want to have experience of what it is to be on water in a boat. So it was like this, was like this, was like this, and so on. You've never seen a mass of water like that? No, Why? we didn't. Mm. So that triggered Idris into vomiting. Oh, some stomach upset. Stomach upset or whatever. Wow. So we were coming back. Then he collapsed. When you go back? Yeah. Then he collapsed. Ha! Ah, this is serious. He couldn't even do much. And imagine both of us, we were small. Mm -hmm. He is in Abuja now. Mm -hmm. he is here already. And I had to carry him. I said, no, I will not leave my friend back. I have to carry him. And I managed to take him, to take him on my back. We were eating Amala. Mm -hmm. We said, what kind of black food is this? <laughs> I, I told him that it was that black food that was responsible for it. So yes, I think so. He uses it, yes. That black food we were eating is probably what triggered all this. Not knowing that it was dizziness and so on. Mm. Anyway, we managed. God so kind. He recovered. And we watched. We saw the queen. Okay. The next day. The next day. Mm. At Tafabula Square today, as it is in Lagos. Mm. And so on. And then at the end of it, in fact, we came back. Mm. Still the same process. Mm. It was an experience for us. A very big one indeed, yes. and a very great one indeed. Mm. You watch a reflection, someone reaching you from the Nigerian Television Authority. We will now take a break. I'm discussing with uh, Major General Paul Chabi Tarfa, uh, our guest for this week. Stay with us for the remaining part of the program. When Shagari wanted to make me a minister, he called me. He said, uh, I want you to develop and deliver still the life of my administration. He says, sir, do you have that much confidence in me? He said, yes. This was a politician now talking, and I did, and I delivered still to Nigeria in six, six months' time. I'm committed to a united Nigeria where nobody is discriminated against on the basis of his religion or tribe. Ojoku didn't want any settlement. He didn't want to come back to Nigeria, to return to Eastern region. He was bent on secession. Have we really learned lessons from the Civil War? We have not. And I'll uh, tell you, in the main people who have not learned, let me come, let him say it, is you people, we, who? the journalists. Hey, welcome back. And how was your first day at NMTC? That's another interesting one. Yeah. When I was selected to go to Kaduna, Mr. Stride said to me, that's the vice president. Was, was who selected you? Yeah, Did you school. just decide? No. Or no, what no. influence was there In on fact, you? What not really at happened? all. I had no idea. Mm. No, we were just going to the end of the school. Mm. I mean, uh, we had already taken the school certificate, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, uh, was uh, examination and so on, no results yet and so on, but we were then, and the NMTC was about to start, I did those days they call it NMTC, mm -hmm. Nigerian Military Training Center. Right. That was in April. Which year? It, it was to start in April, mm -hmm. but of course we finished around November exam and so on, so we, we have to. But then they said, uh, one to go to Kaduna, but before then, before then, the, the, the class ahead of us, mm. there were two one called Hassan, and the other one was called Auta. Right, I don't, they were not from Adamawa, mm -hmm. but in those days, we used to have some from Benue or others coming to Yola either to continue and. Also, there were some from Yola who used to go to Bauchi to continue and so on. So Hassan and Auta probably came to Yola. I don't know what, on, on what's, 
under what circumstance mm. or whatever it was. How they came. Yeah, mm. but they were in Kaduna to, you know, either to take the, the, the qualifying examination or whatever it was, but they didn't make it. Okay. Because there was no history of their presence at all. They did not make it. So when our time came, this school under Mr. West and uh, uh, Stride chose me that I should go to Kaduna. Mm -hmm. Just that. And Mr. West said, Mr. Stride said, you have been chosen to go to Kaduna from the school, from the class. But if you make it, you will top the school honors list. Okay. Mr. Stryer said, I have seen your character and you will make it. Smallish, mm, that's what I thought. frail. Mm. There were heavy people mm -hmm. in the school. And soldiers then were really heavy yes. people. Which Indeed, yeah. giant but men. he said, I would go mm. and take the qualifying examination. I did not beg to go to NMTC. But then, when the time came, I was given three pounds, three shillings or whatever it was in those days, mm -hmm. God knows, to go to Kaduna and back. Write the exams and come back. Yeah. Okay. So I paid my way to Kaduna. They were received all over the country then. All those intending to be officers, they call it potential officers okay. qualifying examination. All right. It was English, geography, mathematics. I did very well, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Okay. I did very well. Maybe that could be why Mr. Todd just asked you to go. No well, but that, 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 not because I was intelligent <laughs> or I was brilliant, right. but only that, of course I know that I'm very good in geography. There's no good. doubt I love geography. Okay. And English wasn't too much a problem for me at all. Mm. So I featured well. Anyway, whatever it was, I qualified very well. Mm. Before we were dismissed, we were told who were to come back. Oh, right there and then. Yeah, right there and then. Mm. After they had finished the exam and okay. so on and so on and so on. Okay. We were all assembled in front of what is today the uh, FRC and uh, headquarters in Kaduna, mm -hmm. around that roundabout. Mm -hmm. That was the headquarters of one, one brigade. So they are calling. If you they say, if you hear your name, come over here. So they are kind of one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth name was me. This is number ten six six. 1066. 1066 PO, a potential officer, potential officer cadet, Paul Tarfa. So when I was crossing, ah, the insulter saw me walking. He said, ah, I want to come as Don't say this was, this was also one of them. Yeah. But I was number six. The whole long list. Oh, was it because of your stature, your smallness? And it was not it? because uh, it was not alphabetical. Mm -hmm. It was not based on provincial thing. Mm -hmm. Only maybe the performance. They selected thirty-six of us okay. of the whole crowd, and asked the rest to go back and try again. Of the thirty-six, can you remember the names of some of your colleagues among the thirty-six that are still alive today? Well, some thanks to God Almighty, mm. I can remember some. Some who are they? The most famous mm. is our president, the, the president. Okay. Um, His Excellency, mm -hmm. President Muhammad Bahari. Okay. Was one of them. All right. Led Shehu Eradua. Okay. Was one of them. Mm -hmm. The Emir of uh, Gwendu. Uh, Muhammad Bashar, mm -hmm. he was then called Muhammad Jega. Okay. Uh, Wala Oni. You are a potential officer at NNTC, 
And by the time you come back from Canada, you are a full-fledged officer. Absolutely. And then um, certain tools or certain your feet in Nigeria, you didn't steal much, you were sent to the Congo. Yep. Indeed. You know, we, in fact, how it happened. I mean, at the end of the qualifying examination, that July, we were called to assemble at the press square by the principal, I mean, a uh, uh, chief instructor called McKinney's, Captain McKinney's and others, or all the instructors. In the same form, we had then at NMTC two platoons. Listen here sharply. Uh, if you hear a name, come forward, march forward, halt, and relax. Then they are calling. Halt and relax. Yeah. That's, that's the military come. language. Yeah. Right? Officer Kadeh so, 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 sir. Officer Kadeh so, sir. Officer Kadeh so, sir. My name was the third. They called nine names. Mm -hmm. And they said, listen carefully. Congratulations first to these nine names. You are lucky you have succeeded and you are going to proceed to Canada. What? Canada. For further training. Canada. Was the president? No, 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 to be selected yeah. from the initial number gathered in Kaduna mm. to proceed for further training in Canada. You've always been among the first, among the first, among the first. Right from the primary school, even the kindergarten, your elementary school, I must say, down up to up to up to NMTC. Yeah. And of course, same thing goes for the fact that even at Canada, when you come back here, you, you are among the first to be posted out of this country. You find it? yourself in, in, in Congo, in United Nations peacekeeping, just not too long that you come The out. interesting thing about it mm. was that when we came back, the day we came back, um, I mean, we, we, we came to this country from Canada. Mm. We landed at Kano. Of course, from Kano, we were driven to Kaduna and uh, at the office mess we were received by Captain Ben Adekunle. Okay. So in the mess, you know, we were talking there to the officers to eat. As soon as we arrived in the mess, I said, uh, yeah, I'm the duty officer. My name is Adekunle. We were second lieutenant there. We, we'd been Commission second mm -hmm. lieutenant. He said, Who is uh, Paul Tarfa among you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, I'm the one. Then he said, Congratulations. I said, Yes. He said, You are going to the Congo. So eat quickly. A lot of is waiting for you outside here. It right. will take you to Enugu. Mm -hmm. And from there, you are going to fly to, Enugu, uh, to, to the Congo. What a word. The only one among all of them. The only one. We just arrived, though. Mm. The day we arrived in this country, taken from Kano to Kaduna, into the office of to eat. Then they couldn't say, Congratulations. Who is Tarfa among you? I said, I am the one. He said, Congratulations. There is a lot of outside for you, waiting for you to take you to Enugu. The commanding officer is waiting for you in the Congo. Wonderful. And Congo meant peacekeeping mm. operations. Canada, Nigeria, Congo, oh, yes. all in the same week. Yeah. Then we got to Enugu. 
and then one officer called uh, Adenhon received me. Are you the one? Say, I'm the one. So congratulations. All right. Uh, Fajui is waiting for you. He's been asking whether you have arrived. Who is Fajui? The commanding officer. Right. <laughs> the Congo. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. What was his rank then, the commanding officer? Lieutenant Colonel. Right. So that's it. And so I found myself. The day I got to Nigeria, from the day I got to Nigeria to the day I was just seven days. Just They just showed me where I would be for a few days. I would be there before going to Congo. And then on the eighth day, I was in the Congo. Terrible flight. But what was extremely interesting to me, mm. which I didn't know, was when we were going, the soldiers who were going with me in that flight, some of them were rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank God, oh, I'm going to Congo. Thank God, I'm going to Congo. I said, ah, but I thought we were going to war. He said, don't worry, sir. They will give us a troops comfort fund. Mm -hmm. They will give us something. They will give us radio. Mm -hmm. They will give us money. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, is that what it is? But you are a platoon commander. Mm -hmm. So you may be going to war, but some of us are going. We'll come back with troops comfort fund. And what was the troops comfort fund? Mm -hmm. Watches, okay. radio, okay. and whatever it was. Right. But that was how it was. So I found myself in the Congo the day, a day after uh, I came to Nigeria. And when I got to the battalion, they were as if it was something. Uh, I was received by one uh, Lieutenant Akinola. Akinola took me to uh, the airport where my company was. Uh, it was a company under Abisui. And Abisui received me. Uh, are you uh, Paul Tarva? I said, I'm good. We hear you Canadians were handpicked. Mm -hmm. So I will see what uh, it means to be handpicked. Right. I'm going to post you to command uh, 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 number one platoon. Number one platoon means the point platoon okay. in war. Um, <clears throat> normally in this kind of assignments, and when you leave like this, you come back. You were in Congo in 1963, I believe. 63, and then, 64. 63, 64, almost a year, then you came back. One would not, you know, resist asking you, what memorable thing can you, you know, put down that stays in your memory in peacekeeping in Congo that you'll never forget and of course of great lesson to you and to us the younger ones. Well as Abisoye told me, mm. I'm going to test you to find out how you people they say were handpicked. Good. So not long, maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks thereafter when I was with him. Then there was smoke and fire at what they call Primus Factory. It's like what we have, you know, brewery. Okay. Star brewery or whatever. So because we were at the airport, in Jili, they call it, Jili Airport okay. in Congo, in Kinshasa now. To protect, and, 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 and the brewery was not far from there. So it was under our jurisdiction right. problem. So I said, come on, here it is. Number one platoon, go and quell that situation. At the brewery? Yeah, uh, the, the brewery. Mm. And it was around six o'clock. Was it, it a six. fire or what was it? Fire. Mm. You know, according, they, they used to call them gendarmes. Okay. Uh, it's like, what we can say, Boko Haram now, okay. attacking one oh. place mm. at night. Okay. And then there's a, you asked to go and I was going to, I was detailed to go and fight it out and take the place. You led the troops to that place? Yeah. Right. So Abiso said, you will take the place and stay there until you are relieved okay. the following morning. And of course, right. I was very fresh. Mm -hmm. All the 
the tortoise at Kaduna and in, uh, in Canada, uh, in, in Canada yeah. as, as a prison commander. I, I employed it so well, mm -hmm. uh, extended file formation. Or, uh, Kai, it was a beautiful experience. And you returned to base. Mm -hmm. And you had a good time there at the base. And you stayed in Congo up to 1964. 1964. So we returned to Nigeria. In June 1964, and were received by General Gowan, who was then the adjutant uh, general of the Nigerian army. It was then that he saw me. Okay. That was the first time of meeting you. Know? Um, the first time. So at the parade, when he was there to welcome us at Enugu. Um, then he was going around and shaking hands with us, welcome. I said, oh, he's not my name, mm -hmm. Tarfa. Yeah. So he came close to me. He said, your name is what? Tarfa. I said, yes, sir. Porter. So he told uh, the captain, uh, Patrick, his name is Captain Patrick. He said, take his name down. So he took my name. Then after that, we were given 20, 21 days leave. Okay. So we went. When I returned from my leave, I discovered that I'd been posted to, uh, to Lagos. Okay. And uh, that's how it went. When, when did you, when did you, get uh, your first call. Yeah, when when we came back from yeah. the Congo, you know, we were given some money, small, small, mm -hmm. small, small. small. So I said, okay. Yeah. Uh, I said, I'm going to use this money mm -hmm. to buy a car. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to be the first boy from my village to own a car. All right. All right. So there was one Italian yeah. that was working at the Kalaugo Sibeg company. Mm -hmm. In those days, I don't know whether he's still there. Yeah. Uh, he was going back, so it was it was Fiat Fiat eleven hundred. I don't, I don't know whether it was the number of the car or whatever, but we used to call it Fiat eleven hundred. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought that car to was it is it one hundred and fifty pounds or yeah. whatever it was. Okay. Very small money. You know, but uh, so I bought that car and I said, I have to go to my village. I had to go to that, you know, with that car. Wow. It became a kind of something. So when the time came that I was to go, um, I made it known to Jalo and uh, Abisoe. General Jalo. All right. Late Jalo. Mm -hmm. I made Abisoe now. Uh, Jalo was like a senior brother to me. Okay. During the days who was in second, he always called me my junior brother. Okay. And um, Abisoy, very good man, very good officer. Mm -hmm. My OC, officer commander, and they cared for me. So I told them I was going to travel. He said, no, 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 no. Where? I said, Garkida. By what means? Lowry? He said, no, I have a car. I said, don't, don't make that mistake. I said, why not? Uh -huh. so do not make that mistake. You will not make it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to hear a poor has accident on the road with the car. They said, no, I will go with you, sir. So <laughs> they said, impossible. As a matter of fact, Jalo was keeping an eye on me. Every day he would try to find out whether yeah, I ran or not. So the day I decided I was going, I didn't tell anybody. So I just decided I put the things I wanted to carry home inside the boot. And five o'clock in the morning, I stole my way out. When I left the barrack in Enugu, I was going to Garkina, mind you, a thousand kilometers away. Mm. Ah, I did, I thought I had serviced the car and so on, but I wasn't experienced enough. So there's one place called Millikin Hill, 
Mm -hmm. Enugu. When you are coming out of Enugu towards Otokpo, my God, on the left is a high hill like this. On the right, deep gully. <laughs> and I had left without telling anybody in that car. Oh, you were alone in the car? Yeah, and I was alone in the car. So when I got to the beginning of the hill, I started thinking, my God, I wrote. You looked up. I, I looked up. Yeah. And it wasn't bright enough. Mm. It was dark. Mm. But I could see how deep it was on my right. right. Then I started knowing. And that's why Jalo was saying I should never make it. I should <laughs> never drop. And uh, here was a lorry behind me. I was afraid to give way. So even left or right, because mm -hmm. I couldn't even go left, because no, there was no space. Not to dare go right. And the glory, the glory driver was behind me. Didi, didi, I said, to hell with you. And then I got, <laughs> I was in J3. Uh, J1, okay, right? J1, right, yeah. is it? Mm, yeah, the slowest. One, the slowest. In a small car like this, that I would My God. But that driver was very good. He could have banged me mm. today. Mm. And I made it barely. My God. When I did, then the car just collapsed. Whoa. When you? Yeah, I wonder if you need the hill, mm. the climb. Mm. The car just quenched, got overheated. Yeah, sure. Then I got up. It was something to six, and I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go back. And then, my God, I thank God. There was still fuel inside, but it had overheated. Later on, I waited for 30 or 40 minutes, I think, alone. Mm. When I was trying to stop it, nobody stopped. It was too early. Though. It was too early to stop. Mm. Eventually, I got inside to my you surprise. Tried again. I don't know that it had cooled down. It has cooled down, yeah. It did. I said, thank God. And I managed to go to Otrupo. Okay. And I was looking for fuel. Mm. I thought it was only shell that was good for not knowing that everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Every <laughs> one, I never like to talk about that because it well, it's part of the adventure <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I got to Kankida. Yeah. But when I got to Kankida, in fact, got to Eno sorry, Makadi, somehow I went through Makadi. Mm. Then my sister was there. When they saw me, they were so surprised. Here I am, a small car. Where are you going? Kaduna. I got here. Mm -hmm. How come? This is my car. Is all right. Please, you have to go back or leave the car here and go by taxi or lorry <laughs> because we don't want you. The road is not good. I said, we told you. And they insisted I have to leave the car here. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I will not. They said I should leave the car in Makadi and go by public transport. I refused. Eventually, I beat them to it and I got back to get here. Somehow, it's another story. It's a long story. But it was exciting. It should be exciting. And on a final note, your reception in Garkida. Yeah, in Garkida. those days, yeah. there was only one person. Mm. And that was my, my cousin mm. who had a car. He was a uh, police... Inspector, I think you must have been an ASP called Mojim. Mm -hmm. He had a car, and he was the only citizen of Garkida, indigenous of Garkida, that went home with a car. So I was the second. But oh, of right. course, he was much older, not mm -hmm. as young as I was. Yeah. So when they saw me, they were like, ah, he has come with a car. He has come. Everybody was coming to see what the car looks like. They thought it was, it belonged to uh, one of the Americans. Mm -hmm. so, so it's me. Or the district everybody wanted to touch it. Like everybody that. wanted to get inside. <laughs> we want, everybody wanted to have a ride in it. Yes. So it's mine. Yeah. And so I became a star. <laughs> this was long. Yeah. Of course, my guardian, then my guardian, was so excited. He said, yeah. I know one day you will come with a car. Yeah. He said, I know. One day you will come with a car and you have done it. Congratulations. So he had me like this. 
and I was going around. So every every young man wants to be like me, either to join the army or every young girl wants to be my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> And that was great, really. I just want to remember on the final lot, you know, how we, your guardian felt that you said one day you'd be something. Yeah. I was uh, thinking of uh, his own, uh, you know, his own promise to you when he took you away to his house and then reflecting on what your dad did to him. Mm, absolutely. Exactly saying that your dad has been of immeasurable help to him mm. and I brought him and made him what he is and he's tried to pay back. And that was just a very good experience. And of course, you paid him back too. By the Indeed. Time. Uh, you know, the first and the first, and keep on being the first mm. and the second, mm. or rather the first in your peers to come home with a car. Yeah. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank indeed. you so very much. We've got to call it quits on this program right now because um, we'll take another time and then look at some other aspects of your career as a military man, most especially talking about the coups and counter coups in Nigeria, what your roles have been, and how these coups were, you know, quelled some of them, and how Yakubu Gawan was able to just bring back this country, mm -hmm. and have us all to just say there was no Victor and no Bangui. We good. must also thank you too for coming this far. It's that it's been a very beautiful, you know, elucidating, you know, explanation from uh, Major General, you know, Paul Chabri Tarfa. His life has been that of a soldier, a soldier, and a soldier. And that is why most soldiers will refer to him as the soldier soldier. I'm Yusuf Nadab Osman. See you then.